You are listening to King Jesus Radio, the official podcast of New Living Way Church. Amen. Well, welcome everybody to Bible study tonight. Amen. Welcome, welcome. And uh, glad we're all able to join the King together tonight and those watching with us online as well we're looking forward to what the lord has for us tonight as we close up actually nehemiah i'm sorry i'm um, acts chapter 14 um no i didn't i actually wrote nehemiah so a little cloudy still there it's it's acts it's acts acts chapter 14 uh verse 24 through 28 so i i know sister karen was ready to get me on that one so <laughs> but i actually did write nehemiah in my book over here well wow. But let me roll and correct up here for us. So, amen. So, and it's correct right here on the on the pulpit as well. So, so it'll be Acts chapter 14, verse 24 to 28. It will be actually closing up um, this chapter tonight. And uh, just looking forward to what the Lord has for us. So uh, we'll open up in a word of prayer tonight. And uh, as we as we come before the Lord, amen. So praise God. So let's go ahead and uh, let's pray. So uh, Pastor Pat, would you open us up in a word of prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day you have given us, God, Lord. We thank you for life and for breath, Father, Lord. We thank you for your word, Father, Lord. We thank you, Father, for ministering to us, Father, Lord. We thank you for the lives that have been transformed through your word, Father, Lord. We thank you, Father, for all that you are doing and that you continue to do, Father, Lord. We bless you and honor you. We thank you, Father, Lord. And with grateful hearts, Father, we thank you for all that you are doing, Father, in our country, Father, Lord, and everywhere, Father, Lord. Amen. May, Father, may we be a blessing unto you. May we be a light unto you wherever we may go, Father, Lord. And, Father, Father, may we be witnesses unto you, Father, Lord, and may, Father, Lord, may we continue, Father, Lord, to disciple those, Father, Lord, that you put in our lives, Father, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, praise God. Glad we're able to be here tonight. And uh, so just a couple of quick announcements. We do have prayer this uh, this Friday. And uh, we are in, let me get that real quick for us here. But not next Wednesday. No, not next Wednesday. No, no, uh, no Bible study next Wednesday and no prayer Bible? next Wednesday. And uh, <laughs> no Bible study next Wednesday. Tell your mom. So this, but this Friday there is prayer yes. and uh, we'll be meeting here in the annex room at seven and we'll be in John chapter five, verse 13 through 15. And that is, he hears us. He hears us. That's the topic on that one. So we went through the whole month in prayer, and it was uh, Matthew 6, 33, added to you. Uh, Matthew 7, 7 through 11, give good things. And this past week was James chapter 4, verse 1 through 3, you asked wrongly. And this Friday will be John chapter 5, verse 13 through 15, he hears us. And so uh, we'll be meeting here in, in, the, in the annex room at 7 p.m. Um, but if you'd like to just join us, you know, from your home or wherever you're at that day, you know, feel free to take some time that day to uh, come, you know, to pray and to seek the Lord. Amen. So yeah. we'll be in that. And again, that title is He Hears Us. Amen. So we can we can have the joy of knowing our God hears us and he is faithful. Um, so this uh, so we'll be doing that this Friday and uh, this Sunday. We know that it is Harvest Sunday. Amen. It's it's the Lord's Day as every day is the Lord's Day. Amen. So. Uh, and, it, you know, this, as the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So we'll be coming together on Sunday. We will actually not be having a live stream. We will not be having prayer in the morning. There will be no um, normal regular service on Sunday, uh, but we will be having a service outreach. So we will be meeting outside here at 1045. And uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be setting up a couple of tables and tents. If you'd like to come and join us, feel free to do so. Feel free to bring a, uh, your own chair if you like. And uh little umbrella if you like, or however you want to do that, um, feel free to come and join us. We'll be out here. We'll have some candy out here. I'll have a cup of some coffee and uh, some pastry, stuff like that to come and hang out. And for the neighbors passing by, just to, you know, we'll have some Bibles as well, be able to hand out to those that are passing by. And for those that would like to come and dress up and go out there, that's fine. We can do so. And uh, we'll also be taking that time. We have some candy bags that have been prepared as well for that day. And we're going to go take a walk around the neighborhood and, uh, and instead of uh, going and trick-or-treating, we're going to actually go out there and give something. Amen. We're going to go bless those that were able to go knock on the doors and uh, pass them out a candy bag. Amen. So just to let them know that, uh, you know, we're just thinking about them and praying for them. And uh, we'll take that time on, on Sunday as well. So we encourage you to come and join us that day. And uh, we're just going to be a light. Amen. Because how many of us know that the harvest is ready? Amen. So, you know, what? but the Bible says the laborers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest field. So. That's what we're going to do is we're going to take that time just to come out here and just to uh, 
just to be a blessing. Amen. So looking forward to what the Lord has uh, prepared for that for that morning and uh, just looking just grateful to God. So and also, again, just a quick reminder, again, as Sister Karen said, no Bible study next week and uh, no Friday night prayer. So, you know, we'll be taking that time. So we're looking forward to what God has for us. That day. Amen. Um, any uh, any just anybody's like to give the Lord a shout, just a testimony to the Lord or just, you know. Just share anything that the Lord has been sharing with them or anything. We could take that time real quick. I, I, last week, ending Sunday night, was one of the roughest weeks <clears throat> I've ever endured. Um, and so my thought is the faithfulness of God because Amen. we made it through. Praise God. We made it through. And Sunday night, there was peace. I've had peace since then. And uh, God is just good. Yes, he so is. Good. Amen. Yeah. Yes, he is. What would we do without him? Oh, I know. It's it's. Uh, I was thinking about that yesterday, and uh, just talking about that. And it's you know, it's it's actually talking about it with somebody about you know, regardless as a Christian or not a Christian, we all go through stuff. We go through life. We have all these different things, but the difference is we have the hope, and we know the hope that we have, and yes. that's in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And not only for ourselves, but we know the hope that the world has today. So even as hard as it is to see the things and hear the things or just to even go to the things, you know, we go through today. But there's hope because there's hope. Jesus is that sure hope Amen. and his word is never fails. Yes. His word is faithful. He is faithful. He is good. You know, and it's just I'm just encouraged in that and, and to be able to know that, you know, we have an awesome God, a mighty God. You know what? And there's no other God like him. So we can rejoice in that. And we can praise in that and we can, you know what, and that gives us the, 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 the strength that we need because we realize that through it all, he is our strength and we have the victory in him. So, you know, what? but it just comes back to that word you said there, faithful. He is so faithful. He is just so faithful. Yes, it's definitely. I just want to give uh, thanks to God for his unconditional um, love and Amen. his mercies uh, for everything that he's doing in Especially in my life, but I know that He's always there for everybody. So I just want to praise Him and Amen. Him for everything that He's doing in my life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We want to praise Him too for you. Amen. We want to thank the Lord for all that He's doing in all of our lives and your life. And praise God. Thank you for sharing that because that's a personal testimony. You know what? And that we could just come to that place to be able to say, Lord, I just thank you for being so good and all that you're doing in my life. Because He's faithful in that, right? He is so faithful, you know, and it just reminds me of being, keep going back to Nehemiah <clears throat> Sunday morning's prayer and, and uh, just to really hear about, you know, how they acknowledge the sins of the fathers and themselves, but how they talk about the arrogance and the pride of their sin, you know, but yet to be reminded, but yet you are a God that is ready to forgive steadfast in your love steadfast in your mercy and your grace and just how awesome and mighty he is and how wonderful he is so you know that is just again the faithfulness of our god amen anybody else anybody else i have a scripture yes go yeah, ahead, sister. Uh, That's i read the other day that it's the shortest scripture in psalms <laughs> it's in psalms 117 it says praise the lord all you nation yes praise him all you people of the earth yes where he loves us with an unfailing love his faithfulness you're talking about faithfulness. Amen. Of the Lord endures forever. Praise yes, the yes. Lord. Yes. Wow. I think sometimes we just forget to praise the Lord in the midst of yes, life. yes, yes. And absolutely. Just, and just getting up every morning and just praising Him for the breath that we have to be able to just worship Him and love Him, with even out thinking, you know, um, getting up and think about everything you have to do, or just life itself. It's just you know, Lord, you are just so awesome and you are just so amazing and you are just so faithful. And it's just using the breath that He gave us to praise Him. And yes, amen. Him. yes, amen. And it's amen. like you know, the day, the day, whatever's <laughs> going to come that day is going to come, whatever it is. But He knows. But I think when you start your day off with just a love for Him and a worship for Him and a prayer for Him or getting out and walking with Him, I think it just gives you this peace for the day. Of how great and how Amen. faithful he is. Crazy. So yeah. I said it's the shortest song in song, but it has so much stuff in it, and it's true. Every nation will bow. Every yeah, nation right. will confess. Uh, that's right. And Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. Amen. One day. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. There's a song that I, I forget who sings it, but they it's talking about praising the Lord. 
but it says, I choose to praise you now, though. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, hey, one day they'll come that everybody will, that's but true. I choose to praise it's you true. now. Yeah, that's true. It's like, we're, we're the church. We're praising you now. We're not waiting until that day. We're praising you now. Do you, you know? know who Guy Penrod is? Guy Penrod, He's no. He's from the Aether, the Aether Singers. <clears throat> oh, okay, okay. I've heard of them. I've heard well, of them. He sings a Revelation song. And you could just imagine heaven when he sings that song. Oh, amen, God. amen. You know? Yeah. It's just... Yeah. Amen. Amen. What's the name of the song? The, the Revelation song. Yeah, it's called. His, his name is Guy Guy Penrod, and he's from the the Gaithers. The Gaithers, I think, is what right. 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 Little country, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But they do. I I know that they do that because he lives, right? Because he oh, lives, yeah. I can they face tomorrow. Yeah, I love that song. That's just one of. That's actually a song that has stuck with me since a child. It's just one of those songs that just like, you know. You didn't even remember. It's just like when you heard it, you're like, oh, wait a minute. That reminds me when I was a kid, you know, like, yeah. and I don't even remember that far back, you know. It's one of those songs that gets implanted in you. But amen. Amen. Wasn't it written by Jack Hayford? What? The Revelation? Because he lives? Oh, because he lives? I'm just saying a version that I've heard that they've, they've done. They did it oh, really beautiful. good, I believe. Yeah, they do a very beautiful version. So beautiful. praise God. Amen. Well, what psalm was that again, Pastor Pat? Psalm? 117. Psalm 117. Amen. So praise the Lord. You know Two what? Verses. Two verses. <laughs> We have enough time to read two verses, amen? <laughs> so if we if we don't know anything else is going on or we don't know what to pray or what to say, you know what? Turn to Psalm 117 and just start to declare that word because you know what? It's just, and, and that's what it's all about. It's just continuing to be thankful, continuing to praise God through it all. You know what? And um, I was a Casting Crown song that says, I will praise you in the storm, amen? Yep. <laughs> so he is faithful. Anybody else? Anybody else? Before? Yes, uh, faithful. I feel like this may be a topic, but I don't know about the opportunity to talk about Stuff. Amen. It's weird to like take our eight and just like with everybody to Lloyd. Um, but with this environment, it's pretty you know, like normal to talk about. Um, you know, we have Christ like all the time. And then we're like have debates and you know, um, it's cool to see like the curiosity in people. And I feel like I find like a lot of opportunities to talk and it's it's cool to like meet that young you know, Amen. It's exciting. Like having to be able to have this conversation with people like eight and they don't get excited. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know what? And you know, it's funny because a lot of times we look at it, well, man, everything's so godless and this and that. And you know what? But at the same time, I mean, through all of the stuff we've gone through, people are shooken up. They're scared. They're, they got many questions, you know. So, you know, people are open right now too to be able to talk about God, you know, or to ask questions or you know, and and uh, and it's actually a really good time, honestly, to really be able to let our light shine and to be able, like you said, to be able to talk about God. So, you know, and and that's awesome. That is amazing. You know that that door is open, right? Because the door that God opens, no man can shut. Amen. So we can definitely rejoice in that. And she has a powerful testimony. Yeah, we have a lot to share. That's right. That's right. That you share all that God share. has done for you. Yeah. He's continuing to do for you. So. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing that with us because that brings us all joy here as well. Amen. Oh, awesome. Thank you guys for just giving the Lord some praise this night. Amen. So because we're all encouraged together and, and you know what? We all have that responsibility. And you know, and that's what we've that's what we've been saved to do. That's what God called us to do. And it's through through everything, you know, how just the faithfulness of God, like we talked about last week, you know, was through the suffering, but through that suffering came strength came strengthening because all that Paul and Barnabas and all that they faced, they were able to use that to encourage the church that, look, these are things you're going to go through, but you're going to go through it. You're going to come through it, you know, because they were able to share their suffering. But in that suffering, they were able to strengthen them. But they weren't only just strengthen them for one thing. They were going to be leaders in the church. They were going to be part of those that would have to, you know, endure and persevere. So that's that's the awesome thing through it. And, and you get to hear that through all that we've shared tonight is that we're glorifying God still through it all. Amen. And praising him through it all. So praise God for that. Amen. And that is all part of our teaching tonight. Amen. As we continue to look at, you know, the, the rejoicing that is going on here. So let's go to Acts chapter 14. And we're going to close this out tonight in verse 24 through 28. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for every testimony that has just been brought forth, Lord, your word that has been shared, my God. And Father God, this is all coming from a place, Father God, of a personal relationship with you, Lord. And Father, just to be able to declare to, to, to each other and to the world today and just to be able to share together, Lord, that who you are to us, Lord God. And Father, you are faithful. 
You are a good God. And Lord, we thank you tonight as we're just able to praise you, to glorify you, to worship you, Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you tonight, Lord, that every testimony that has been shared and every word that has been spoken here tonight, Lord, is to bring you glory, Lord. And Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, because Father, that is part of the teaching tonight, Lord. Because Lord, we're going to see here tonight, Lord, as we're studying and looking to your word, Lord God. Father God, what this did for the church, Lord. And Father God, so what we have done here, Lord, is just an example of what we're able to read here tonight. And we just ask you, Lord, that you would even give us clearer understanding and deeper understanding, Lord God, that, Father, we could be reminded, Lord Jesus, that, Father, what we go through and face, Lord, Father, again, we're going through it. But it's that, Father, that we're able to bring back and to share with one another, to encourage one another, Lord God, because, Father God, that's what you saved us and called us to do. So, Father, we just thank you tonight. We ask you, Lord, as we come together, Lord, teach us by your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lead us and guide us, Lord, and direct us by your Spirit, Lord. And we just thank you, Father, as we're encouraged tonight through your word, Father God, to continue to live, Lord Jesus, holy and blameless in you, set apart, Father God, unto you, Lord. So we just thank you for this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what we're looking at here is now um, Paul coming home, amen, to Antioch. So let's look over here. Verse 24, it says, Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. And when they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. And from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that, had, that they had fulfilled. And when they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them. And how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles, and they remained no little time with the disciples. Amen? So what is amazing here is we're actually seeing now Paul and Barnabas, they're returning back to where they started, where this whole mission started and where they where this whole, where it all began. Okay? So I just want to open up with this today. And, you know, this is very important that the importance of having a home church of having a home place, a place that you can call home, a place where you are rooted, a place where you are established. Because remember, Paul and Barnabas didn't go out on their own. They went out and by sent out by the Holy Spirit, but it was the church coming together. And we're going to look at that in a bit. But this was the church coming together and sending them out. They prayed, they fasted, you know, and they came together. And it, the Holy Spirit said, now take Paul and Barnabas and send them out on this missionary journey. So they didn't just go out there on their own. They were led by the Holy Spirit, but they were also supported by the church. The church is saying, we're sending you out, but we're standing with you in prayer. And we're standing with you not only in prayer, but also financial support. And not only that, but wherever we can help in the labor. So wherever, whatever was needed, this was not just Paul and Barnabas, but this was the church together collectively going out and doing a work. Now, Paul and Barnabas were the laborers out there. They were the mouthpiece. They were those that people saw, but they had a home church that was there supporting them with them because they were praying for them. Earnestly. Yes, earnestly. And so they had the support. So now what we're seeing here is we're seeing them come back to their home church. Amen. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 10 and why this is so important. If somebody would like to read this, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 through 25. Very important scripture here, especially in these days. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 through 25. <clears throat> Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is in the matter of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. To, to what? It's right there. That's okay. okay. So this is the scripture that's well known. Do not forsake the assembly of the brethren, as some have made it a, a you know made it a habit of doing so. And what it's referring to is because of the per persecution of the church. So many were afraid to meet. Many were afraid to come together. So many were kind of pulling back. But right here, what he is encouraging the church here, he's saying, first of all, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. So it's like we were just talking about earlier, that no matter what we face or what we see, 
the testimonies that you guys shared is the hope, though, that this world still has today and the hope that we have. And he's telling the church, hold on to that hope, but not just hold on to it, but hold on to it without wavering. Don't allow the circumstance, the situation, and all these things to cause you to waver in your faith and in the hope that he's still God, he's still faithful, he's still true, and he is still saving people today. Because the message of the cross, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, is still going forward today. And the Holy Spirit is still doing his work. And the Lord is still Lord of lords and King of kings. And he will never cease to stop being Lord of lords or King of kings. He is the I am. He is the God of gods. And he has all the power and all the authority. So he is able to open up a door and make a way where we would never even imagine. It's like what you were sharing. It's like, wow, I would have never imagined this. But that's God. You know, through the dark times, through the hard times, through the sufferings. But yet God always makes a way to show himself faithful and say, but I'm with you through it. Can I read a sentence? Yes, go ahead. I read it today. It says, we as intercessors confidently declare, so important, that it still works. We state our faith that the mercy seat is still in operation. The throne of grace is still the highest throne, and it still releases all sufficient grace. We pray and declare these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's good, huh? That's good. Amen. And it's, and it's truth because it's talking about who our Lord is. And so this is where he's saying, this is why it's so important that we come together. Because again, where else are we going to go and hear this? You no, know, it's 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 like, I, you know, I, I always share, used to love watching the, the old, the, not the old ones, but there were more of the newer Garfield cartoons when my kids growing up. You know, my kids would grow up and so they will, you know, we would watch Garfield together. I love it. I mean, the cat's funny, man. He's just funny. And but there's this one episode where it's this they're watching the news and he turns on the news and it's this bird. You know, he's doing uh, the news and all he says is, and over here in this place, this happened. And over here in this place and this happened. And it's all bad news, you know. So every time I turn on the news or I look at things, that's what comes to mind. I, I get this vision of like all these bad things that are happening, you know, and it's and it's, unfortunately it's real because there's a lot of real stuff happening. But it just reminds me. But, Lord, we have hope today. And this is what he's encouraging them through everything they're going through. They were going through persecution. They were being killed, martyred. They were going through all these things. But he's saying, but without let, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is, what's the famous word tonight? Faithful. Faithful. He is faithful. So through it all, he's going to remain faithful. And he will always remain faithful. And the Bible says that even when we're unfaithful, he still remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. Those who belong to him, those who he indwells and those who abide in him and he abides in them. Those that are the temple of the living God, the children of God. He is faithful and he's still faithful to a world that even still rejects him. As he was faithful to Israel in their rebelliousness and their prideful rebelliousness, he was still faithful. And he still remains faithful today. So that is the hope that we have today. And he's telling them, don't waver from that. He is faithful. And in verse, but verse 24, but he gives them a challenge. though. So he says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Let us be able to encourage one another. Remember, what we talked about a couple of weeks ago, well, the church is not your enemy. Let us encourage one another. Let us uplift. Let us build each other up. Instead of tearing each other down and focusing on each other as enemy, no, there's a real enemy out there. His name's the devil. Principalities, wickedness, bondage. But we, the church, are not each other. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. And what we're supposed to do is come together as we share tonight in these testimonies. That's part of building each other up. And it's in the love. And what that is, it stirs us up and pushes us forward to, to good works and in the love of God. Because now we want to continue to go because we realize we're not alone in this. And this is what he's encouraging. It. But again, that's why we need one another. That's why it's so important to be a part of a church body. To be a part of, of the church, the body of Christ. Because this is the place where we come and we, we get encouraged together. We encourage one another. You know what? And we're coming from the side of victory. We're not going to a Dodger, a Laker game, or a Raider game. You know, it's like, I'm just naming teams I like, you know. 
you know, but you go over there and of course you got other fans and stuff like that that are with you, but you also got a bunch of enemies who are not with you. And you don't know if you're going to win or lose. But in Christ, we come to the house of God. We come together as a body of Christ. We won. We have the victory in Christ Jesus. We come to the top of the mountain. Exactly. So we can go out living knowing that. <laughs> and like Pastor Pat shared earlier, it's that no matter how that day is going to turn out, we can start it off praising God. And no matter how the day start, starts to go during the day, we can still praise God. And no matter how it is, by the end of the night, we can still praise God. And even if we wake up in the middle of the night, we can't sleep or whatever is going on, we can start to praise God. Because he's still God and he's still faithful. And this is the choice. But again, this is where we come together. This is where we're encouraged. This is our place that we can come together and be encouraged through the word of God and who God is. Not about what everything this and no, no, let's come together and focus on the Lord. What does your word say? What are you speaking to us today, Lord? What are you teaching us? What is it I need to learn today, Lord? So I can recognize it in this world and I can pray and I can be, allow you to do that change and bring about that change within me. Because that's what it's all about. In verse 25, he says, not neglecting to meet together. Don't forsake the assembly of the brethren. We need one another. We're the body of Christ. How can the body function unless we're functioning together? Amen. We need one another. Yeah. Not just New Living Way Church, the body of Christ. Yeah. And so he's saying, don't, not neglecting to meet together, but look at he says, as is the habit of some. How many of us know habits? Come like that. <laughs> How many of us have some habits? Good and bad. Well, this COVID caused new habits where people aren't going to church. Yeah, and then, you know, not only that, eating habits. I'm not going to lie, my eating habit, you know, got a little worse, <laughs> you yeah. know, in certain areas. You know, I, I would like my habit to have been better, and I know Lethe could probably vouch for this, is that my habit would be, man, I got in the habit of just washing the dishes all the time, you know? <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't work that way. I think I've gotten a habit of, kind of leaving it there and hoping somebody else washes them dishes. <laughs> you know, of course, we will always want to get in a good habit, you know, but it's it's hard. The bad habits come easy, though. The habits that don't benefit all of a sudden creep up on us. And this is what he's saying. It's not just something that's okay here and there. No, he's saying what has become a habit of some. He's saying, don't allow this to happen because he's saying now people, have, this has just become a habit. They're just not coming together with us. Yes. They're not joining together because it's a habit. It's just gotten hard. We've got comfortable. We've gotten into a place where it's just easier this way. Yes. But he's saying, no, don't do that. We need each other. We need one another. Let us continue to join one another. And he goes on to say, but encouraging one another. And look what he says. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. So he's saying, as you see the day drawing near the second coming of the Lord, we need to meet together even more because as the times get darker and if things get harder, and things, he's saying this is where you definitely need each other even more. Because it's coming together that's going to help me and you not to fall away, not to get up, caught up the way the world does, but to come together, to see God together because we need each other. To encourage one another, no, brother, no, sister, we're going to do this. We can make it. God's word is faithful. Look what he did for me. And we're able to share, you know, this scripture. Look, look at this scripture here. This has been ministering to me, and we're able to share it with one another. You know, I know Facebook and all these, you know, social media do get a bad rap, but there's a lot of good stuff out there. Sister Alma shared about the support group last time. You know, people are using that platform for good. You know, just to put up a Bible scripture up there and somebody looks up, you know, they're scrolling through a hundred things. And then all of a sudden they see that, oh, wait, there's a scripture here. And that's even non-believers. I've had people come to me at my job. I have this little, this little thing. I've had it up for years, you know, as long as I've been working there. And I've always tried to keep something. And it's just a little thing. And all of this is just a scripture. And it just, it, I, it, it, I can change it throughout the days. And sometimes I'll just leave it there. I've had people literally ask me, can I have that? Just one little card because of the scripture that's there. Is it a red 
Uh, yeah, kind of like a daily bread. You know, mine says all things are possible. You know, it's just a little thing that I have on there, and I'll switch the scripture every now and then, but I'll, I'll read it. But others are reading that. You know, and I, they would just put it on, you know, I've seen some just put it on their, their desk, the, like a little tape thing, and they keep it there. You know, and it's just like, wow, that's amazing. You know, there are other, was a, one of them was another religion, but they liked what the word said, and they took the word and they taped it on their, their desk. And I was like, wow, Lord, because, again, it's the word of God. And the word of God is living and active. The word of God gives life. And we need each other, especially as the day is drawing near. And so we see here that Paul understood this. He wasn't just preaching it, but this is something he was also, he, he knew was important. Because Paul was constantly out. Stab, he wasn't just, he was establishing churches, building up leaders, you know, doing all these things. So how nice it is for him to be able to come back home. And we're going to look at that right now. But any thoughts, any comments or questions as we go back to Acts 14 to continue in the scripture? My version says that, um, it says, but encourage and warn each other. Ooh, oh, that's, good. that's good. See, mine didn't say warn. Mm -hmm. But that's, yeah, amen. Amen, because definitely. Plus the tradition of helping our ministers and missionaries is going on from the beginning. Yeah. So... Pat, mine says exhorting. Is exhorting and warning the same thing? Yeah. yeah. It is? It's a strong, it could be a, considered a strong encouragement. Okay. As something as, you know, it's like trying to stop somebody from going off a cliff or something. You, you, it's a strong, it's an exhort, you're exhorting them, but it's a strong warning. Okay. You know, you could be strong in that cool. exhortation, you know. So it's not always, hey, you're doing great. No, it can be very strong as well because, like, you're, again, your life depends upon it. Do you think that, that, Paul and Barnabas were considered the first missionaries out of Um, Well, to go out to the, yeah, definitely, because they were going out to the Gentiles. You know, the disciples were staying close to the Jewish people and stuff like that. You know, they were going out, but Paul and Barnabas were actually going out and establishing churches in this Gentile nations. This is their first missionary trip right here, yeah. Right? Yeah, okay. definitely. So they're going out there and they're establishing churches and they're going to the territories and, you know, that are definitely not familiar with the God of Israel, <laughs> as we've seen in, in, in scripture already. So yeah, definitely. This was the first missionary trip here that was outside of Jerusalem and outside of the Jewish people. Amen. Any other thoughts or comments as we continue to go forward? This is good stuff though. Thank you guys. Amen. Amen. Well, let's, let's look back over here. So we're going to see here as they're returning back, um, so I'll go back real quick just to read the scripture. And it was actually in Acts 13, 1 through 4. And this is, again, this is where they started off. And it says here, now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. So we see here, this is a church going out. And again, many times we may say, well, I want to go out and I'm not doing anything. No, we are. That's what, But we're doing it by praying for those that are out there, supporting, you know, in any way that we can financially. You know, or laborers, like you said, coming alongside. That's part because we're doing it all together. Now, there will be some that are called out to the mission field. Praise God. And some of us won't be. Praise God. But doesn't mean we're not called to still serve. And even though Paul and Barnabas were out there, but yet this was the church together. Because of the support of the church as he was sent out, that they were sent out by the Holy Spirit. So now what we're seeing is we're seeing the completion and the fulfillment of what they had been sent out to do. And now they're coming back. And this is what we're reading here in this portion of scripture through verse 24 through 28. It says, then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. And when they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. So I want to look at something here. Before they went back to Antioch, they had to go through some pretty rough terrain because these are some places that doesn't necessarily mean that they were accepted. They were pushed out some of these places 
And not only that, through one of these cities, let's go to just uh, write the chapter right before Acts 13. Let's look at verse 13 through 14. Remember these names. <clears throat> they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. And when they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. Now let's look at Acts 13, 13 through 14. It says, now Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia. And John left them and returned to Jerusalem. <clears throat> so see, we see them going back to these territories, but we also see that this is the same territory what John Mark left them. So there could have been some unfinished business here that they still had to go back because of John leaving. And John left, you know, for whatever reasons, but a lot of the thought is, is because of what they were going through. It was a lot. It was a lot to go through. And so John left them through this. But now we see that Paul and Barnabas are going back that same way and still completing the work that maybe they didn't get to finish at that time. They went back through these cities. Part of, and that's not going to be easy. I mean, you know, you got to go, they got to go back and retrace some steps for, Man, remember when John left us? <laughs> remember when we went through here? Remember when this happened? Remember when they came against us? Remember when that sorcerer was trying to take credit? Remember this? How many times in our walk we got to go back to some certain things? We're just like, you know, they're not always the best of memories. But because of the work that they were called to do, they were willing to do it. And even though they had to retrace some steps, they still went through there. And they continue the work by preaching the gospel and bringing forth the word of God. So sometimes in our lives, we may have to go back through some places, back through some areas, back through some relationships, people. Wow. Ooh, that, that, yeah, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> you know, I mean, sometimes you're like, why? <laughs> you know, but because there's still some work that needs to be done. And it's God's work. It's the will of God. And so this is where we have to trust the Lord. Lord, it's not my will be done, but your will be done because you know what's going. You know what's being done. You know what's necessary. It just may be issues in our own lives of, you know, things that God is working out in our lives. Maybe some memories or things of unforgiveness that, you know, what still need to be dealt with. Issues that God is still working out. Just some things that we may have to go back through. But again, there's a purpose for it. And Though they went back to these cities, there was a purpose for it. They were on a journey. There, were, there was a set purpose and destination. And that was to complete the work for which they were sent out. Preaching the, Preaching the gospel. Doing what God had called them to do. And we're all required to do the same. we got to continue to keep going. Trusting the Lord. doing, Allowing God to do the work that he's bringing us through. And it's living out that gospel, living out that relationship, living out that testimony that God is doing within us. You know, and I shared this the other day about, <clears throat> you know, I heard this a long time ago shared. It wasn't about the type of people that Israel was when they went in the wilderness. It wasn't even about the type of people they were in the wilderness. It was about the type of people they were going to be coming out of that wilderness. Okay. And I remember that was shared many years ago, and it just really stuck with me. Because God remained faithful because it was a matter of the heart of how they would be going into that promised land. It took 40 years and, you know, a lot of stuff they went through. But through it all, God remained faithful because it was a process as they came out of slavery from Egypt. But it was a matter of what type of people they would be. And even then, they still returned back to some ways and God was still faithful to them. But we see here that Paul and Barnabas went back to these places and they continued the work that God had, you know, called them to do. Any thoughts or comments or any, any questions on that? So the time period that they stood there is like what, 18 months to two years? Like Something like that, or yeah. Of, of, of um, staying there and preaching and teaching? Yeah. And stuff and um, establishing what, leadership? Leadership, different oh. things, you know, bringing forth the, the church, you know, establishing churches, everything. So that tells me the importance of discipleship. Yeah. Yeah, and these were people that were hungry for it, people that wanted to know and to learn, you know, and, and, you know, doesn't mean it was everyone, but it was a group of people, you know, that were being established. And as we shared last week, you know, but he had to be real with them and he had to tell them about the suffering, yeah. 
but it was through his suffering that came the strengthening for them that this is what I've been through, but, and this is what you'll go through. You'll maybe differently, but it's through it that you can do it. And that's what the strength. I apologize. I don't remember why John Mark left. There's an argument, right? Well, it's not really known. It's not very clear. It just says okay. that after that time, but that was after the time that they had come into the, 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 uh, um, what is it when they went through what was it the guy when the city came basically against them you know because of all that was done the disciples uh no no the the leaders there and stuff because that's where bar jesus was and all of that the sorcerer that wanted to oh yeah basically yeah, yeah. all of that so they had come through some they had they had opposition and so you know they were they were going through some stuff so again it's not very clear as many different thoughts of why john mark left um you know but he, he left <laughs> regardless you know, but we do see later on that he is restored and uh, we do see it was for a season. So, you know, um, but definitely, you know, this was, you know, definitely still it was still fresh and going through these cities. I mean, it was still remembered that this is you know part of what had taken place. So let's go on to verse 26 here. And it says, and from there they sailed to Antioch. So Antioch is again, this was the main home church now became a bigger church than even the one in Jerusalem for the Christian church. And this is now where they're returning back is from exactly where they were sent out from. And it says where they were, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had filled, fulfilled. So they're returning back to the place where they were sent off from. So that word commended, which is our basically our title tonight is to give into the hands or to give in over into one's power or use. Uh, the thesaurus says to present as a suitable, to present as suitable for approval or acceptance or to recommend or entrust someone or something to. So basically they were commending them to the work of God. So when they prayed and they fasted and they laid hands on them, they were now turning them over. They were giving them, they were recommending them. They were entrusting them with the work that God was calling those to go out and do. And the church was doing this. The church was coming in agreement and commending them. So now they're returning back to the place that they were commended. And they're able to come back and say, so all that you send us out to do, we did. We went out there and yeah, we went through this and we went through that. And we went, you know, you know, even to the point where they thought Paul was dead. But the work still continued. And even when those that thought Paul was dead, they came around him and still they stood with him. And the work continued. And it's just like, you know, when Jesus is praying to the Father, all that you have given me to do, I've done. Jesus fulfilled the work. You know, and this is what Paul and Barnabas are coming back saying. It's we, we were able to do what, you, what we were sent out to do. And how many of us are looking forward to that day when we come to the Lord and says, well done, good, faithful servant. Enter into the rest that's prepared for you. And see, and that's where, but again, it's a purpose. It's There's a reason, there's a, there's a plan, and God has a plan for our lives. We've been commended to the work of God. And he doesn't just say commended, but it says commended to the grace of God for that work that they had fulfilled. See, it was the grace of God. So grace is not only the grace to be saved, but grace is also the grace that we need to be able to serve him. As he tells Paul, when he says, my grace is sufficient for you. It's that grace to be able to do what God has called you to do. He's equipped you. And if it's going through this suffering, then God has equipped me and you to come through it. If it's to go through this situation or the circumstance or to go through this process, but it's the grace of God that is enough for me and you that is sufficient to bring us through. And that's why Paul learned. He says, so I will therefore boast in my weakness, because when I am weak, then I am strong. He's, but it's actually he is strong. He's strong in me. And so he just didn't do this on his own. They didn't do this on their own. They did this in the grace of God. So me and you today are not working on our own. We're working in the grace by the grace of God. So even when we're tired or we're just like, man, I can't go anymore. But it's the grace of God that pushes me and you forward. It's the grace of God that gives us, that has already equipped us with all that we need. And so that's why it's saying those, and they were, that they had, 
had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had fulfilled. And that word fulfilled is just to accomplish, to make full, or to complete. See, I love how Tony Evans put it. And this is where things can kind of get a little difficult, especially in our Christian walk. This is where it's important that we have a relationship with God. We have a relationship because we know that our 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 whole thing purpose is eternity, right? Heaven. That's that's the goal. That's salvation, right? You know, that's what it's all about. But we also have goals and purpose here. God didn't just save us just to save us. He saved us with a purpose. A purpose that he had predestined, a purpose that he had set even before the foundations of the world. You know, before we were born, there was already a purpose and a plan set for us. And because of salvation and because of the grace of God and the mercy of God, that plan and purpose is in effect. But the problem is, is when we kind of don't seek him and we're trying to find our purpose or make our purpose. But yet we're missing the purpose is where we can get lost and confused. Is where we can find ourselves with one foot in and then one foot out. We can find ourselves in a place, well, I'm going to do this, and then we don't do it. And we keep finding ourselves in a place of, well, just disillusionment, not satisfied, confusion, all these different things because we're trying to figure out our purpose instead of trusting God and looking to his word and saying, but Lord, I may not understand it, but I know there is a plan and a purpose and there's a reason for all this. Even through what I'm going through today, I realize there is still a plan and purpose and you are working it out for the good. And I can trust you in this. But when Tony Emmons shares, he shares about how his dad would take them out on a Sunday drive and they would go on a Sunday drive after church. And I like how he put it because he says as they would go on the Sunday drive. But the problem was there was no destination. There was no destination. They would just drive. So he says, though, it was kind of nice. He goes, but after a while, you just see the same trees. You see the same, you know, sceneries or whatever it was, the clouds or whatever it was. He goes, after a while, it was just repetitive and it was dull because there was no destination. Yeah, of course. But as a child, it was like, you know, but again, if there's no destination, then it's like, you know, if you're going somewhere, then, you know, if you're driving to San Diego, right? Two hours, right? It's like, you know, you get to the place where everything just kind of looks the same and it's just kind of like, all right, the water's nice, but I've seen this water. But because you have a destination, it's worth it. You realize, okay, that's nice, but I have a destination. I know where I'm going. So therefore, you're willing to press through that drive. Or you're going up to San Francisco or Berkeley or you're driving up, you know, the coast or whatever, but you have a purpose. You have a destination. When me and my family took a road trip, we ran through like seven different states, but it was nice because there was a destination and the destination was Seattle. So even though we went through all these different places and some scary places, it was like, oh, man, I don't, you know, it's just like, but there was a destination. So through all of that, it was like there was a purpose. And so. When we're trying to live a life as a Christian and we're trying to follow Christ, but we're doing it without any destination or plan or purpose. This is where we find ourselves empty. This is where we find ourselves trying to find a destination or a purpose or we're trying to make our own way. And this is where we find ourselves where we're in a place of unfulfillment. Because now it's like, well, I've already heard that. Oh, I've already seen that. Oh, I've already done that. And so, therefore, we find ourselves in this place of no purpose, no plan. But when we trust the Lord and realize, God, I may not understand it, but I know there's a destination. I know there's a plan. And I know there's a purpose. So I need to keep doing what I'm doing because, Lord, you're bringing it to fulfillment. And you're going to bring me through. So what I can do, I'm going to do, but I'm going to trust in you to, that it's your grace that's going to help me to do it. That's going to help me to live it. That's going to help me to stay faithful in my commitment to you. And not only that, that's going to help me not to fall away. And even at times of tripping up or anything like that, but yet, Lord, I can come to you and turn to you so you can pick me back up and help me through it. But you're living, we're living our life now with fulfillment, with purpose and realizing, God, your word says you have a plan and a purpose for me. 
And that plan is for good and not for evil. Amen. To bring me hope and a future. Amen. Amen. And that's the joy. And joy is not always a place of having a smile on our face all the time. Joy is a rested assurance that God, I know that I belong to you. My life is yours. Because life doesn't always feel like it's joyous. But don't ever mistake happiness for joy. Because happiness is an outward expression. It's how we feel at that time. Joy comes from within. It's a joy of the salvation that we have, that Lord, no matter what, through it all, but God, thank you. It is the joy of my salvation in you, Lord, today that I am saved, that Lord, I belong to you. That you're my God, you're my Lord, and I have peace today because I have peace with you, Father, through your son, Jesus. I have peace through your word that assures me, Lord, that you are faithful. I have peace today knowing that, God, through it all, I could still praise you. And through that is what brings about to realize, Lord, so I recognize there is a plan and purpose for my life. And though I may not know where the destination is, but your word, your word says, your, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Because your word can light the way right where I'm at, but your word can also show me the way to where I'm going. And your word can lead me. He says, trust in the Lord with all your hearts. And do not lean on your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. The steps of, the, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. He has ordered our steps. But what does it come down to? Following Jesus. It's the personal relationship. Following the Lord. And continuing in that journey. And knowing God, you're in control. And this is the beauty of this, is that they're able to come back and share this. They're able to come back in a place that what we were sent out to do, though, we went through all, the, all of this happened, this and that. John left, this and that. But we were able to do what we were sent out to do. And now they come back and the church is able to rejoice with them. They're able to share in the fruits of the labor with them because of their prayers, because of the supports. Because not only that, but while they were out there, they were handling the things in the church there in Antioch. They were still functioning. I'll tell you, I was so blessed this Sunday. I was so blessed. Because even though I had to leave after prayer, and I did that just using wisdom because of how I felt. But even though I went, I had to leave, I, I left. Church still went forward. Amen. Because the body of Christ was still able to function. I was sick. And so therefore, but church still went on. Amen. Praise still went on. Worship still went on. The word still went forth. And God was still glorified. And that is a blessing because that is... That is every pastor's heart. Amen. That's right. And that's why we need one another. Train and, let go. and it was beautiful. Yeah. And this is what, that's what it's all about. So when they're coming back, it's not just coming back, hey, look at us. No, guys, they were able to share everything that God did. Because it goes on in verse 27 to say, and when they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And they remained no little time with the disciples. They came forth and they were able to share the fruits of the labor. As we were here today and you were sharing your testimonies. That is awesome. You're going out there living your life. You're going out there in, in, your, in, in, in your relationship with God. And then you're able to come back and share, this is what God is doing. You know, you know, hearing the testimony that was brought forth, it was a hard Sunday, it was a hard week, a hard Sunday night. 
but it was able to praise God. You know how encouraging that is for all of us? All that you guys share tonight and everything that's being shared and everything that you share or you share with those around you is just a testimony of God's goodness and your relationship with him. Because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And it's because of the love of God. And so right here, they're not coming back to boast about, oh, God did this through me and God, no. This is what God did. And the church is able to come together and share in those fruits. Yeah, it should. Yeah. They were happy that the, that the bar was open to the Gentiles. Yeah. Because the promise was fulfilled as in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 4, where he says, and all the families will be blessed through you. All the nations. And that word just became more alive to them because now it wasn't just the nation of Israel, those around, it was the whole world. Because of the promise and the covenant that was made to Abraham. <clears throat> that a savior would come through Israel. But not just for Israel, but for the whole world. He just chose Israel to make a name for himself through. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's the same with us today. God chose us to be able so others can see who he is and know who he is through our lives. But it's in that personal relationship with God because we've been commended by God, by the grace of God. We've been entrusted. Our lives are handed over into him. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 8 through 17. This scripture comes out quite a bit, but there's, of course, key scripture. Chapter 10, verse 8 in Romans, it says, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess your, with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him who they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. And this is what Paul and Barnabas were doing. They were bringing forth the word of God. They were sent. And we are sent today. We have that same responsibility today. If you're taking notes, you can go back later and read John chapter 14, verse 1 through 17. And it talks about the fruits and it talks about the love for one another. And we get to see that uh, John chapter 14, verse 1 through 17. Is it John 14? I'm sorry, John 15. But if it's not John 15, then it's John 14. <laughs> yeah, the fruit in the vine. It's John 15. John 15, 1 through 17. There we go. But read John 14 too. Amen? Read 16 too. Read the whole book. <laughs> read your Bible. <laughs> But it talks about the fruits. It talks about the love for one another. And we definitely see the fruits and the love for one another being displayed here in this portion of Scripture here. And I look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5 here. And he tells him, as for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, Fulfill your ministry. So he's giving Timothy a, a, a very, you know, key word here. Fulfill your ministry. Fulfill what God has called you to do. Let that be your, your, your concern. Lord, I just, want to, I just want you to fulfill the work that you started in me, Lord. Timothy was being entrusted with, with the ministry. But we all have a responsibility because we all have the ministry of reconciliation. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 
We're going to look at verse 11 to 21. <clears throat> 11 through 21, yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11 to 21. This is talking about the ministry of reconciliation. It says, therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are is known to God. And I hope it is known also to your conscience. So he's saying what we're doing is known to God. God knows the work we're doing. But he's also saying, but we also pray that you know the work that we're doing, that your conscience knows this. But look what he says in verse 12. He says, we are not commending ourselves. We read earlier, they were commended by the church. And he's saying here, we are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearances and not about what is in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. And all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him, in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen? It's the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself through his son, Jesus. And it was by the mercy and it was by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are able to share that today because many will say, well, we're all children of God. No, we're not all children of God. We're the creation of God. But we only become a child of God when we put our faith in his son, Jesus. Because now we belong to him because we're choosing to be reconciled to him. And that's why Christ died for the world to reconcile humanity back to himself. Because he's holy. And we can only be holy and righteous and justified in Jesus Christ. And see, that is a blessing today is when people can see how we are as people. But yet not because we're perfect people, but because we have a perfect God. Who we choose to be reconciled to through his son, Jesus, because of our faith in him. And a God that they can be reconciled to if they choose to repent and turn to Jesus and put their faith in him, not dependent upon their righteousness or their goodness, but because of faith in what Christ Jesus has done for them as he has done for us. And this is the work that we are all commanded to do as they were. But it's in this work, as we continue in that relationship with the Lord, highs and lows, dark light when any time we go through, but God is faithful. And there is a purpose for your life. There is a plan for your life. And there is a destination. And we're on our way. And we may not understand it all, but we can trust him. So even though it may seem sometimes that, well, I don't know where this all end up. Well, don't worry, because you're not in the driver's seat. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Was that song say, Jesus, take the wheel? Yes. He should already have the wheel, honestly. He's in control. So we can trust, Lord, I know there's a destination. There's I a purpose. There that. is a plan. And we can rejoice in that. And when that happens, and we can come to him and praise him, Lord, thank you, Lord. Because, Lord, I know you're working this all out for the good. Because your word says you're working everything out for the good of those who love you. Yes. 
and have been called according to your purpose. You have a purpose. And in that purpose, we're able to share with one another and encourage one another. And that's why it's important that we come together. Bible study is important. It's a very important part of, of coming together as a church body because as we're able to study the word, prayer is very important. I know everybody loves the Sunday service and it's, it's great, but prayer in Bible study is very important. Yes. Our own personal Bible study prayer, but also corporately. Because this is where we learn. When the people came to be discipled by Jesus and Paul, the people came. They wanted to hear. They were hungry. But what are we willing to put into it? To be discipled. To be willing to learn and to grow. Because we have to be willing to count the cost. Because there is a cost, but the cost is worth it. But it's all paid for. Because Jesus paid the price. Oh, but how fulfilling it is. And like I said, to hear the testimonies tonight and just the word shared encourages us all. And that spurns us all to do even greater works and to love one another and to continue in the grace of God. Amen? Because we may, in, honestly, we don't have what it takes to serve God, but we do because we have the grace of God. Amen. The grace to be saved, but also the grace to live and what he's called us to do. We have the Holy Spirit. So his grace is sufficient. Amen. But keep in mind, many believe that after this, when he came back and he spent some time with them, it says he, did, he stayed for a while with them. That this is where he wrote the, to the Galatian church. After this? After this. Yeah. And this is where he wrote to the Galatian church. And when you look at the book, and we're going to look a little bit into that as we go into the next chapters. But that's where division and confusion started to come in because this is now where they started to try to go back to the law. So always, even though there will be unity always, but there will always be things that will rise up that will try to bring division, confusion because of disagreements. And those are some of the things that now they would be going into. And that's why he had to write the book. To the, the letter to Galatia, to the Galatian church because there was a lot of things that still needed to, they were still figuring out and still had to be dealt with. And they even Paul himself didn't have all the answers, but he brought it through. And this is where all the decisions would start to be made about the law and all the different things. So that's amazing. Thoughts, comments, questions, <laughs> scriptures. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So it's later they argue with Mark, huh? After this? Hmm? It's later they argue with Mark? <clears throat> no, it's in chapter 13. That's when he left. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So is there another argument I'm thinking of? Is it Timothy maybe? He no, no, it's when uh, we're going to be coming up on that in a couple of chapters. It's when uh, Paul and uh, Barnabas actually split because oh, of, because of that. Okay. Mm -hmm, yeah. They go their separate ways for a season. You know, but even in that, we see that God was still in control of that, so. You know, because eventually we do see Paul and he says, bring him with you because he's he's uh, he's useful to me. Yeah. You know, so they do reconcile definitely. So, you know, sometimes our relationships, we may have those seasons and then there may be time of reconciliation. So just all in the Lord's time, you know. So, you know, we definitely see that Paul, when we get to that place, we'll see that Paul's grown a little bit more, seen a little bit more. And, uh, you know, he's in a better place. And so was, you know, John Mark as well. So. You know, sometimes our relationships, we're, not in, we're kind of in an immature place, but, you know, we may come to a place of maturity where we're able to reconcile in some relationships. So I said some, right? <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, the Lord's work, so we trust him through it. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else as we close up tonight? This is so off topic, but <clears throat> we had a discussion today about how Saul <clears throat> was supposed to be not David, the appointed king. And I never realized that because of all the stuff that Saul went through, you know, mm -hmm. how he turned his back and all. Yeah. And we were talking today because you're talking about how we're used about that God has a plan A, but sometimes plan B turns out to be the A. You know, it's exactly what you were saying earlier. Jessica. Or it could have always been plan A. Because or when you look at it, when you look at it, Think about it this way. God already has a plan and a purpose for everything. Yeah. Even Pharaoh, he says, I'm using this for my glory. Yes. He hardened his heart, right? Yeah. So think about it. When they asked for a king, 
was God was not happy with that, but yeah. he gave him a king. Yeah. But they had to realize what was going to come in place with the king. Yeah. It's going to take your daughters, mm -hmm. going to take your, your sons. Yeah. He's going to tax you. Right. All these different things. And what he warned them about is exactly what Saul was. Yes, that's true. They got what they asked for. Mm -hmm. they? they got what they asked for. And through it all, you see Saul's heart. And you see that Saul, when he talks to Samuel, he says, your God. Doesn't say my God. He says, your God. Mm -hmm. So we see that they got what they asked for. But even though they got what they asked for, God still had a king who was a man after his own heart. Amen. Not a perfect king. No. <laughs> Far from it. Definitely not. But a king. And again, this is just, again, this is. Yes, yeah, so mighty. Yeah, know. exactly. It's as God sees fit. So they could always just been the original plan anyways. But, you know, again, but yes, God can always raise up another. And he does talk about that as well. So, you know, we definitely see that. And, and uh, you know, but we know that God is just and how he has set it in motion is the righteous way. So we definitely trust in him in that. So, amen. There's a lot of areas in that. God always has a plan for us, but not all people follow his plan. Oh, yeah. It's important. Yeah. You know, the cemetery is full of potential for people who have calls on their life and never... And they never fulfilled <clears throat> because it was their choice. They choose to go in another direction. Yeah. You know, so it's it's uh, you know, and there's many things we may not understand fully or even know the full full way, you know. But again, God is just; He's good, and uh, this is what we trust Him through it, you know. But definitely, we have our part, our responsibility, and uh, you know, and it's to keep our eyes on Him and to do what He's called us to do, you know. And that's definitely to keep faith in Him. And keep our relationship with him. And in that, he'll bring us about to the work he's called us to do. So don't focus on the work. What am I supposed to do? Focus on him. He'll lead you to the work. And when it comes, you'll know what to do. You know, like I always shared coming here, you know what? Just following Christ. You know, one of the th first things the Lord put in my heart was that soundboard. And it wasn't even, it was even before they even offered, you know, there was opening. They needed help with that. But when I started coming, because I was following the Lord, it was the Lord that showed me what to do. And it was that soundboard. When I would see Pastor Pat or Pastor Abel back there doing that sound, I'm like, why are they back there? They shouldn't be back there. You know, and then I'll, that's where the Lord just placed it on my heart to do that. And that next Sunday is when it was announced, we're looking for people that can help in the sound. And I said, okay, I'll volunteer. And I was in that soundboard and still in that soundboard many times to this day. You know what? And you know what? But it's it's it taught me so much to do that. You know, was that what God called me to do? It's not a matter of that's what God called me to do. He called me to serve. Amen. That's right. That's Amen. what it's all about. Again, I'm here to help you or how can I help you? It's two different ways about it. And that has to be our heart because we're following Christ. So don't get caught up on what the work is. You, the work will come. You'll know it when it's there. And it'll be up to you to make the decision to do it. Focus on him, and he'll lead you in that. And you may even realize, I'm already in the work. <laughs> I didn't realize it, but I'm already work. The Lord has me praying for certain people. The Lord has me doing this. The Lord has me helping so-and-so. The Lord, you know, in my job, the Lord is using me here to be an example. The Lord is doing, and all of a sudden you realize, oh, God, I am being used by you. Amen. I am serving you. But it just, the way I pictured it should be, I've been, uh, I've been uh, putting myself in this place of guilt because I feel like I'm not doing what you call me to do. But then I, by following you and serving you and seeking you, now I realize I have been serving you. I just didn't realize it. And God is, and this is where, again, but it comes down to that relationship. You know, but you may come to a place, Lord say, you know, I want you to go here. I want you to go there. And he sends you out, you know, and that's another, that's another area. So definitely, but it's, again, it just comes down to our personal relationship with the Lord. Amen. He's graced us to do it. He's given us his Holy Spirit. He has given us his word. Amen. He's given us the He's given us salvation through Jesus Christ. Amen. So we can have we have hope today. Let's let us have that hope without wavering. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else before we close up tonight? Well, praise God. Thank you guys all for your help and your input. And Amen. you know what? Being able to come together tonight. It's just a you know, couple couple of verses there, but so much in there. Amen. His word is so faithful. Well, praise God. If there's any prayer requests tonight, you know, that we're gonna, that we are still online. If you're okay with that, we're going we're gonna to pray. Yes, Brother AJ. Uh, <clears throat> yes, yeah, we're getting close for our grandkids. Their faith is strong, but 
still, uh, I want to ask prayer for the right college to accept them and for them to accept the right uh, college or university. Their life will, and their life will be a blessing for others. Amen. So, Anybody lacks wisdom. Amen. We all need wisdom. That's right. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? No? Okay. Well, praise God. Well, thank you guys all for joining us online as well. Any prayer requests you have, feel free to lift to the Lord. We're all coming in agreement with the Lord in prayer this, this night. How Amen. is your sister and your mom? Doing good. My mom's back at work, I believe, today. She got through the, what's it called? The, she's sister? healed. Oh, they're good, too. They were actually here on church on Sunday. So, oh, yeah, her and my brother-in-law were here on church. So, praise God for that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Lord brought them through. So praise God. He is the healer. Amen. Good. He is faithful. So and then we can continue to stand in that because we can as we continue to pray for others for the Lord to bring them through. So especially our brother Bobby as well and, and uh, many others. So continue to stand in the gap for one another. Amen. Amen. Stand in the gap. That's Amen. Right. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just give you the praise, glory and honor, Lord Jesus. And we just yes. thank you tonight, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, as we are encouraged tonight, Father yes. God, through your word, through your teaching. Father God, Lord Jesus, just in the fulfillment, Lord, and the fruits of the fulfillment, Lord God, as we're able, Father God, to, Father, even just being able to study this word together, Lord, Father, is fulfillment in itself, Lord, that, Father God, you have kept us, Lord Jesus, and we've been able to, Father God, stay on the path and the course that, Father God, you have set for us, Lord, in the Bible studies, Father, as we started in Luke, and now we're in the book of Acts, Father God. And Father God, it's just so amazing, Lord Jesus, Father God, in your faithfulness through it all, Lord, how Father God, Lord Jesus, through every single verse and chapter that we have been through, Lord, Father God, it's exactly, Father, what we're going through and what we need for today. So, Father, we just thank you today, Lord Jesus, because, Father, <clears throat> you are teaching us and instructing us, Lord. And, Father, through it all, Lord, we know that you have brought about the fruits and continually bringing about the fruits in our lives and together as a church, my God. Because, Father God, we are doing this all together, Lord, as we serve you together, Lord. So, Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God, as we are reminded tonight, Lord Jesus, of the joy of the fulfillment, Lord, of the work that was done through Paul and Barnabas. And, Father God, Lord, it was not to glorify these two men, Lord, but to glorify you, Lord God. And, Father God, to bring, Father God, joy and rejoicing, my God, in the fruits, Lord God, of the church coming together. Because, Father, all that they shared, my God, was an answer to prayer a confirmation, Lord God, that you were hearing their prayers, and that, Father God, Lord Jesus, that, Father, as they were in a place of recognizing, Lord, that the finances and the support, my God, yes. Father God, was all used to bring you glory and all yes. the things that were done, my God. Yes. So, Father, we just thank you tonight, Lord God, for the finances and the support in this house, for the prayers that, Father God, that go forth, my God, for the ministry here, and, Father God, for the ministries in our in our neighborhoods, Lord God, and Father, throughout the world today, my God, thank you, Lord, for the prayers, Lord God, for all the missionaries, Lord God, and Father God, for all those that are printing Bibles, Lord, and taking them in and establishing churches, Lord God, and Father, helping in, in other nations, and even here in this country today, Father God, as many are coming here as well. Father, thank you, Lord, for the prayers and support for one another from the church as, Father God, we are able to come together and pray for one another, Lord. But also thank you, Lord, Father God, for the laborers, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for the laborers that are going forth, my God, because, Lord, they just want to serve, and we just want to serve you and following you. But in that, you open up doors, you open up opportunity, my God, to be able to serve, to be able to do, Lord God. So, Father, we just thank you today, Lord God, for all those that are going out there, my God, for all those today, my God, that are serving, my God, and doing the work, my God. And we thank you, Lord, for the finances that are provided, Lord Jesus, for all these things to be done, Lord. And, Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, because, Father, we recognize that our finances are not our own, Lord. They're yours. Yes. And, Lord Jesus, when we give, we give with a cheerful heart. We give with a heart of gratitude and a yes, heart of joy yes, yes, yes. because, Lord Jesus, it yes. is all for the kingdom of God. You, it is all for the Father God, for the spreading of the gospel, Lord. Yes. It is all for the work of the ministry. You, so, Father, we just thank you today, yes. Lord God, because in that, Lord Jesus, yes. Lord, we all, Father God, are able to rejoice together, yes. Lord, yes. recognizing, Lord God, that, Father, it's all because of us working together, Lord and the support and the prayers for one another, Lord. 
And Father God, it's not about any man or any woman getting the glory, Father. Lord, it is about, Father, you getting the glory. Because, Lord Jesus, my God, your word says, who was Apollos? Who was Paul? Who was Peter, Lord? No, Christ is not divided. It's all about you, Jesus. And, Lord, we just thank you tonight, Lord, as we were reminded of this tonight in your scripture. Thank you for reminding us, Lord God, for the purpose, Lord, and that, Father, we are living today, Lord God, in purpose. And, Father God, in the plan and purpose that you have for our lives today. And for those today, Lord God, that are have become in just caught Got some bad habits, Lord, or Father God, Lord Jesus, wake us up, Lord, as a church, Lord. Wake us up and bring us together, Lord. That Father God, Lord Jesus, we could come together and serve you together, Lord. Praise you together and glorify you, Lord, and to seek you, Lord. Father God, because, Lord, you have called us all to do it together, Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you this day. We thank you, Father God, Lord, for this prayer request, Lord Jesus, for Father God, those that are making decisions for colleges and for yeah. careers and different yeah. things, my God, they need your wisdom, Lord. Yeah. And we ask you for the wisdom, Lord, because, Father, yes. we're asking for your plan and purpose and your will for their lives today, my God. And they are seeking your will, Father God. So we come in agreement today, Lord, that your will be done and that you would lead them by your spirit, Lord. Father God, and the right decision and the decisions, Father, that you have for them, Lord, because it is good, Lord. And in that place, Father, Lord, all things are possible, and they have all the provision that is needed, Lord Jesus. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you today, Father. Oh, we just thank you today, Lord God, that, Father, you are good and faithful, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you tonight, Lord God. Father God, for your healing, we thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your peace. We thank you for the reconciliation. We thank you, for yes, Lord, for the restoration, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for your peace and comfort, Lord. Thank you for your joy. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that, Father, you are faithful. We thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have today. Help us to be to stay unwavering, Lord. Father, in the hope that we have today, because, Lord, you who promised is faithful. Lord. Father God, and we thank you today, Lord, because that is the hope that this world has today, is you, Jesus. The same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. So, Father, we just thank you tonight, Lord. We give you all the glory and the praise and the honor, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Good night, everybody. <laughs> thank you guys for joining us online tonight. God bless you guys. Let us continue in the work of the Lord. Amen. Thank you.